Well, hey everybody, Merry Christmas. It is wonderful to be with you. Welcome into our home as we step into your home this holiday season. And I just pray that this evening and this whole season is just awesome for, for you, regardless of uh, whether you get to be with family, if you're celebrating by yourself or you're deployed or wherever you might find yourself. I really pray that this word just encourages your heart. Uh, so we were kind of having a little fun earlier. We were hanging up our stockings and stuff. And I don't know if you noticed, but my stocking in the background is like this tiny little stocking. I have the smallest stocking out of all of the stockings in my home. And it kind of it turned into a little joke and we were laughing about it. I think it's because really nice things come in very small packages. But anyway, you know, neither here nor there. Uh, what I really think is kind of funny is I don't remember how I got that stocking. I don't remember why it's the only one on there that has my, a name on it. And I, but I remember when we were starting to kind of our family grow and set everything up. I was like, no, I have this stocking from somewhere at some point and that's my stocking and I want to hang on to it. And so as the family has grown and we keep adding more and more stockings there, uh, one of our traditions here is uh, we all unwrap all the little things that my wife has put in our stockings and she loves doing this. So she actually wraps every little thing that goes inside the stocking. So it's not uncommon in our house when we go through our stocking to unwrap a pack of bubble gum or unwrap a little thing, a lotion or whatever it might be, but that's part of the tradition that she enjoys. What's your favorite Christmas tradition? As you think about this holiday season, what what brings back the best memories for you? Uh, maybe you're, you're young still and you, you're developing those right now. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mom had a tradition where my brothers and I, we got to unwrap one present on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Day, there would be all these presents. But we on Christmas Eve, we would pick one present. And so it kind of turned into like this strategic thing because you didn't want to unwrap the one thing and it not be something like awesome. But you also didn't want to unwrap like the biggest thing because then you didn't have that big box to look forward to. So it kind of turned into this little strategy. And I became notorious for being the present shaker. In fact, my uh, snooping around the tree led to rules established in our home because I was notorious for trying to figure out what every present was before I even unwrapped it. And uh, part of that takes the fun out of it, but part of it still, I don't know, made it enjoyable for me. And then as my parents uh, got more clever and more oriented around that, I just got more sneaky with it. So I won't go into all that, but I will say that looking back at my childhood, Trying to pick the right present on Christmas Eve was one of my favorite traditions ever. Um, so I don't know what yours is, but one of the things that I, I like about Christmas is that idea of the thrill of hope, right? The, the idea that even when we were kids and I got to unwrap one present, no matter how awesome it was, or sometimes if it was like, oh man, I wish I'd gotten something uh, different to play with tonight, uh, I still had a whole nother set of presents to look forward to in the morning. It was so hard to go to bed on Christmas Eve. And so if you're a kid and, and you're like me, you can't wait to see what else you're going to get. And so um, that anticipation would keep me up at night. That excitement and that eagerness to find out what else was coming, uh, to be able to unwrap it and play with it. Like that for me was so formative in my childhood memories of Christmas. And I, I it kind of reminds me of the scriptures that we just heard. You know, the prophet Isaiah he was actually given a picture of something that God was going to do 700 years before God did it. I want you to think about that because like Christmas Eve, we, you know, we just have to wait till the morning and sometimes that can seem unbearable. Could you imagine waiting 700 years for something so exciting, so exhilarating that you were told it was going to change the whole world? You know, um, the, the Hooker family just read for us a prophecy that Isaiah was given in Isaiah 9, verse 6. If I could, I'd love to read for you what comes next in that prophecy. See, Isaiah was told about this, this wonderful counselor, this mighty God, this everlasting father, this prince of peace. But then verse 7 says this, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Isaiah is actually given two different, very important prophecies that come into play this time of year. They are the reason that the shepherds were, were celebrating. They're the reason that the angels rejoice when Jesus was born, which is why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, the first is a picture of a king who would reign 
on the throne of David. That's the ones we just talked about, this, this prince of peace that would reign on an everlasting throne. But the second one that we get from Isaiah, we find later, and it's a little bit different. It's in Isaiah 53, and in there, Isaiah is given a picture of a Messiah that would come to be a suffering servant, that he would actually show up as a human being to embrace the suffering of humanity, the struggles, the trials, the, the loneliness, the heartbreak, the uh, unpredictability, the pain to suffer alongside of us that we could actually experience peace with him. And Isaiah 53, in fact, I'm gonna to turn to it if that's cool. I'm gonna uh, go to Isaiah 53. It's one of my favorite passages of scripture and it tells us in verse four in this other picture that, that this suffering servant who is also the king that would reign in, as the son of David, right? He comes as a suffering servant. It says, surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he, this suffering servant, was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our mistakes, right? Our iniquity. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We are made whole. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, and each of us has turned our own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity or the, 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 the sin of us all. So in the birth of Jesus in Luke... The Cardona's read that for us at the beginning, and I'm going to reread it. It says, Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The reason that there was a celebration that this Savior had been born is because the promise that was made to Isaiah 700 years beforehand finally came to life that the king of kings the king in the line of david the lord of lords who would come as a suffering servant actually stepped into humanity on this day in this little town called bethlehem right uh in a manger in a in basically in a feeding trough uh the king of glory shows up in unlikely circumstances at a time when 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 the world really needed it and the cool thing that as we think about the promise in isaiah is that he has an everlasting throne. So the peace that he brought to the earth that day is actually still available right now. I don't know what your circumstances are this Christmas and uh, this Christmas might feel very different for you. You might find yourself uh, alone. I know that we have a lot of military folks who are deployed regularly. We have folks who watch from all around the globe and wherever you're watching this, if maybe you're not with family or maybe uh, you're somewhere away at work, I want you to know that you're not alone. That's one of the promises of scripture is no matter how alone you might feel this holiday season, maybe you're high risk and you're having to self quarantine. And so you can't be with your family for the first time. Can I, can I just reassure you that the King of Kings, the God of peace is with you. And he actually put it in my heart to share with you that you mean the world to him. And I actually pray that even now, as you've heard his word, even now, as we're just sharing this moment together, that you would actually physically and emotionally and spiritually feel the presence of God. That you would feel the Prince of Peace right now just wrapping his arms around you, reminding you you're not alone. Reminding you that he sent his own son, the Lord sent his own son to come as the suffering servant so you would never have to find yourself by yourself. Maybe for you this holiday season, you're, you're having to celebrate it without a loved one for the first time. I know what that feels like and I know that it can be a tough adjustment. And I just want you to know that the, the Bible tells us that this Prince of Peace, that he actually draws close to the brokenhearted. And I just wanna encourage you to invite him into that. Maybe the greatest gift you could receive this holiday season, this Christmas Eve, is just the comfort of someone who knows what it is to endure loss. Someone who knows what it is to come, not just as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but as the one who would suffer as one of us so he can meet us in our suffering. Maybe this holiday season for you is, 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 is actually the only sense of normalcy you've had in a crazy year. School's been different, uh, the society's been different, church has been different, but it's Christmas. And maybe for you, this is just a reminder that no matter how crazy things are getting, there are some things that, that are the same. And maybe you're just excited that you get a rhythm 
that is normal to you. And I just pray that it is a blessing to you. I pray that it, it just fills you with joy, fills you with peace, and fills you with comfort. Uh, you know, whatever your Christmas is like, whether you're celebrating old traditions or you're trying to find new ones, maybe, maybe a new one for you this holiday includes like Facebooking or Facebook Live or, or uh, FaceTiming or uh, Zoom or something that you've never had to do before, but you're doing something different because you still want to connect. Whatever it is, I just want to encourage you. Look for the Lord and what he's doing in it. I would encourage you even now as you're watching this, take some time to reflect on what God has done. I know in a year like 2020, it's easy to look back and, and, and it feels overshadowed. But where's the silver lining? You know, in the midst of all the challenges that you face, all the tension, all the pain, all the struggle, all the loss, all the, all, all, all the anxiety and all the stress, where was God faithful? Because he still reigns on an everlasting throne. He's still the Prince of Peace. And I would encourage you, no matter what storm you find yourself in, the gift that showed up that day is a gift of a king whose rule has no end. And even today, he is still the king of our hearts. He's still the king of kings and lord of lords. So whatever you find yourself facing this holiday, I want to encourage you just to take some time. Let this be the beginning, not the end of your reflection with the Lord this holiday season. And after this service concludes, I want to encourage you, if you're watching as family, maybe you guys could take some time to share with each other how you've seen God move in your home. Maybe you have a friend or a loved one that you could call. If you're by yourself, maybe you could reach out to someone else who, who maybe could use a word of encouragement. What would God invite you to do to represent his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven during these holidays? Hey, I'm, in a moment here, I'm gonna invite my wife to join us to pray, but I just wanna bless you and I just wanna encourage you. I hope this Christmas Eve experience has been encouraging to you. You're such a blessing to me. I love you. And uh, my wife and I are gonna pray for you now. And we just hope that you have an incredible, amazing Christmas. Thank you for that. I just want to speak a blessing over you before we go and um, wish you a Merry Christmas. So Lord, I just uh, I just thank you for your generous love that you've poured out on all of us, Lord. You don't withhold anything from us and we just love you for that in the way that you love us. And so I speak a blessing over anyone who is celebrating and feeling filled with joy this Christmas season. And I speak a blessing over those who are mourning and feeling lost this Christmas season. And I speak a blessing over those who are surrounded by loved ones and those who are celebrating alone this year. I just pray that you continue to just meet each of us where we are and just to um, continue to pour out your generous love and peace over all of us as we just thank you for sending us the greatest gift ever, the gift of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Well, family, I hope that you enjoyed the service. I pray that it actually resonates from your head and gets to your heart. I hope that you experience all the hope and the joy and the peace that we can rely on and trust in when we trust in Jesus. So I just want to take a moment to pray with you and then say a Merry Christmas to you. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for what you have been doing. Thank you for the word that was spoken. I pray that it would actually impact our lives and transform the way we respond to this season, the way we respond to each other. I just pray for your peace, your joy, and your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Sunday Roger! We love you! Merry Christmas from the Macri's. God bless everyone. The Vega family would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Feliz Navidad. We love you. Merry, Merry Christmas from the McCain family. We love you and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Kristen. And I'm Eric. Thank you for spending Christmas Eve with us. We love you guys so much and we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas.